Okay, we're at Manor Farm Country Park this morning and we're going to go for a bit of a walk, just really a nature ramble just to see what we can see before it gets too hot it was mid-morning so there's still a fair bit of shade around So we're just going to go for a wander and I'm hoping we might actually find some moths to look at even though it's broad daylight I've got an idea where we might find some interesting moths. Now I can hear in amongst this long grass, crickets and grasshoppers. We will do a video this year, I think, on catching grasshoppers because they are a great source of protein. So I think this year we'll catch some grasshoppers and you'll get to see me frying them up and eating them. So I'm seeing a lot of good blossom on the blackberry bushes and lots of bees active pollinating them, which seems like we're going to have a promising year for blackberries, especially if we get a bit of rain in a week or two just to start swelling the fruit. Oh, we've got a nice little mallow plant here. I don't think this is common mallow, actually. I think this might be musk mallow. Not really sure, but very pretty. Look at that. Really pretty plant. We'll look that up when we get home, and if I can identify which species it is, I'll put it on the screen. Now what we've got here is a slow bush. Now I showed you the slow blossoms earlier in the year, and here are the developing fruits. So these will turn into slows, well they are already slows, but they will ripen and swell a little bit as the year goes on and come September, October, they'll be ready for picking. They may not get very much bigger than this, they may only get maybe twice this size, so maybe to the size of a small marble. And they are tiny, very bitter plums. Can't be eaten, well, they're very astringent if you try to eat them raw. They can be cooked into jams, although I've never succeeded in making a nice jam out of them, but they do make a very good liqueur when they're steeped in gin or other spirits for flavouring it with some sugar and spices. Slow gin is one of my favourite winter drinks, especially if I've got a bit of a tickly cough. They're, these are kind of medicinal plants for me. So there we go, that's slows as they're developing. There's another thing to look out for actually, if you're thinking of making slow gin, be on the lookout for slow bushes around about now and you'll get an idea of where you need to come back to in the autumn or late summer. So here's the plan, it's broad daylight, but we're going to head off into this very shady, dark bit of woodland here and check on the trees. And I'm hoping that we will find, resting on the bark of some of these trees, some interesting moths. So we're just going to look around in the woods here and look up and down the bark of these trees especially the smoother barked trees where we quite often will find moths resting flat against the bark. Now the problem with this is obviously that they are doing that because of camouflage and if they're actually very good at it we might not even see them at all. But we'll have a look and see what we can find anyway. Okay, not a moth, but I do know what's done this damage to this tree. This is deer have been chewing the bark here. Stripping the bark off this tree, which I think is a beech tree, maybe? A young beech. So they've been chewing the bark right off of there. That's deer damage. I'm surprised we're not finding more of it, actually. Okay, well so far we're coming up empty. We're looking on all of these trees trying to find resting moths against the bark and well either they're not here or actually they're better at camouflaging than I expected and we're just not seeing them. But we're moving into an area where there's a bit of different 
species here. So we've got birch trees. In fact, I just want to stop and look at the pattern on this silver birch tree here. Look at the fantastic pattern on this silver birch tree. This is quite amazing. Look at the detail in that cracking and striation on this silver birch tree. It's probably actually indication that this silver birch tree is reaching the end of its life cycle. In fact, I think it might already be dead standing. Not really sure. I think there might be some foliage up at the top there, hard to say. But uh, I think this tree may be decaying where it stands, actually. But look at that pattern. Isn't that amazing? Well, I am surprised, and I think probably, yes, a tiny bit disappointed that we're not finding moths resting on the bark of these trees this morning. However, it's lovely to be out here in the woods with no particular plan. Spending time just wandering slowly through the woods and looking at the textures of the bark and the pattern of light coming through the canopy. So, we'll keep looking, but I won't be too disappointed if we don't find anything. I don't know if we're going to see it, but up in this tree here, I heard a woodpecker. And not pecking wood for sounding out and doing the whole mating and territory thing, but actually just pecking away, probably at rotten wood, to get food from inside the tree. That's not, that's not it there, that's a different bird, tree creeper or something. somewhere on this tree here. Let's see if we can actually get a glimpse of it. No, I can hear it up there. But I don't think we're going to see anything. So this also is a silver birch tree here, quite a mature specimen and so we can get to see what happens to the bark in a mature healthy looking silver birch tree. The smooth silver bark that you find on younger specimens breaks up into these big corky ridges like this and this is a this is pretty large really for a silver birch. They do get bigger than this but not very often they are a pioneer species really, and so you find young silver birch trees in grassland that is turning into woodland or in forest clearings, and then they grow to really usually smaller than this, and then they're outcompeted by other tree species which have grown up around them. So it's quite nice to see a large and healthy silver birch tree like this. I don't know if I've ever introduced this plant before, but I think we'll have a look at it now. So this spiky, bushy plant here, this is called knee holly, or butcher's broom. It's a close relative of asparagus, although you wouldn't want to be chewing on this because it's incredibly prickly. It grows to about, well, waist height. It's called knee holly. It's got holly-like leaves, but it's not related to holly. And it's, yeah, I don't know why it's called knee holly, because it's more likely to prickle you on the uh, 
thighs and waist at this height, although this is a, a fairly large specimen. I think the name Butcher's Broom comes from the fact that later on in the year we will see this plant covered in little red berries which look like drops of blood and I presume that's, the, that's where the name Butcher's Broom comes from that it looks like somebody's been sweeping a butcher's floor with it perhaps. So that's Knee Holly or Butcher's Broom. I was hoping we might be able to see some little flowers on it actually. It should have little flowers quite insignificant little flowers actually but it's it's when the berries appear that you see the similarity between this and asparagus which also has red berries and quite interesting here is a silver birch tree which has died but remains standing and you can see if we zoom in right here that a bird probably a woodpecker has actually cut a hole in that tree and there'll be a nest cavity inside of that hole. Don't know whether that's in use right now but there we go so that's a tree that's dead standing and rotting in situ but it's providing a home and habitat for wildlife. I think it's quite important actually that we don't just cut down trees and clear them away that even when we're doing forestry work it's good to leave some dead standing and some log stacks around because there's just such a rich habitat for wildlife in these stacks of decaying wood. Here we've got I think a cherry tree again dead standing but there's a big burr here or burl on this tree and that would be prized by woodworkers for making bowls and various other bits of stuff because the grain pattern inside of that burr is actually going to be all contorted and twisted and very interesting. So we're just turning a corner now, we're going to head back for home. We haven't found any moths. We've got a lovely view through the trees here of the tidal hamble. Nice to be within sight of the water. So thanks for joining me on this wander this morning and it's a shame that we didn't find any moths to look at but it's still never a wasted trip to get out here under the forest canopy, hear the birds and look at the things that you can find. So I'm not going to be downhearted about the fact that we didn't find what we came looking for but instead I'm just going to be happy that we saw some interesting things and we've had a lovely relaxing and calm walk in a tranquil forest in summer. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Mm -hmm.